Is it just me or are many PCs getting ridiculously powerful? And what I'm about to show you is a testament to that. Meet Boss Games M4 Neo. Despite its small size, this machine is packing some serious heat. It's using the latest Ryzen 7 7840HS with 32GB of DDR5 RAM and 1TB of NVMe SSD. This is all compact in this mini PC which has the potential to rival most desktops. And the crazy thing about it is that it's only $440. As someone who primarily games and creates content, I want to see just how the M4 Neo fares in my day-to-day -day workload. Before we begin, let's see what's included inside the packaging. We first get greeted with an instruction manual that we can reference anytime for information on the PC. Next is the main contender, the M4 Neo, nicely snugged in foam, but let's take it out and move it to the side for now. Underneath everything are the rest of the accessories the power supply, a mounting plate, and an HDMI cable. With this, we have everything we need to get started. Alright, how about we take a look at the PC itself, starting with its design. First thing that drew my attention is the pyramid texture and honeycomb ventilations on the top. It has a nice feel to it and gives off a nice impression to fit that gamer theme aesthetic. On the front side, we got two ports of USB 4, two ports of USB Type-C that can also display out, a headphone jack, and a power button. For the back side, we have four windows of ventilation to help dissipate heat. Starting on the left is the DC port for the power supply, dual 2.5G LAN ports, an HDMI port, a display port, and two more USB slots. On the bottom, we have more ventilation, but there are also these rubber stops along the corners to help keep the PC sturdy on flat surfaces. Overall, the M4 Neo manages to pack a surprising amount of ports and connectivity in such a compact frame, and I'm excited to see how I'll start utilizing them later on. With the design covered, how about we get into the internals and check out the hardware. To do this, we're gonna have to remove the screws on the bottom side and use this latch to pull it apart. Here we're greeted with another plating layer that separates the internals. This one is mounted to a fan which we'll have to remove the screws to get deeper access. This one might be tough since you're gonna need a long thin screwdriver, but luckily the well stick comes in clutch for moments like this since it's both magnetic and electric. And be wary though when removing the plating since the fan is connected, so just make sure to detach that first before proceeding. With that done, we can now take a closer look at some of the internal hardware. Let's start with the CPU. This unit is equipped with AMD's Ryzen 7 7840HS. This is an 8-core, 16-thread processor with a base clock of 3.8GHz, accompanied by Radeon 780M graphics. For the RAM, it's pre-installed with two 16GB6 of DDR5 RAM, for a total of 32 gigabytes. With his memory speed clocking in at 4800 megahertz, this is more than sufficient to take on most day-to-day -day workloads. Next is the Kingston M.2 NVMe SSD. This is a 1TB Gen 4 M.2 with read and write speeds of 6000 megabytes per second. In terms of storage, you can install a second M.2 SSD with a total expansion upwards to 4TB. One of the standout features of the M4 Neo is the Oculink port. This is essentially a direct PCIe connection that allows you to hook up external GPUs or NVMe storages with much lower latency than Thunderbolt or USB solutions. This means that you're able to push out higher performance beyond what the integrated Radeon 780M can do. Alright, that basically covers the internal, so how about we boot up the PC and get into testing. First, we'll need to set up the PC, but this process is straightforward. The PC comes pre-installed with Windows 11 for the operating system, so let's quickly follow the steps and get to the desktop. Now we can move on to the performance segment of this video and check out some benchmarks. We'll begin with the CPU. Using Cinebench R24, it scores 812 points in a multi-core bracket. That puts it in the top 5 of the chart alongside desktop class processors like the Ryzen 7 5800X. This is pretty wild considering that we're talking about a mini PC here. With 8 cores and 16 threads, it's more than capable of handling demanding tasks like video editing, multitasking, and heavier workloads that you would normally expect from a desktop setup. Next up, we have the GPU performance. Since it's integrated graphics, we'll see how the Radeon 780M holds up. Running 3 Mark DX12, it gets a score of 434 with an average frame rate of over 4 FPS. Now that's gonna sound low, but keep in mind that this benchmark is built to push even dedicated graphics cards to the limits. So for something like this integrated GPU, these results are right in line with expectations. 
What this really tells us is that while the 780M won't replace a high-end desktop GPU, it's still one of the most powerful integrated graphics options on the market today. That means you can comfortably play esports titles like Fortnite, CS2, and Valorant at smooth frame rates, and even dip into some AAA games at lower settings as well. As for the storage, the included 1TB NVMe SSD hits about 6000MB of read and write. That's well into the PCIe Gen 4 territory and translates to notably faster boot times, snappy app launches, and smooth file transfers. For anybody working with big media projects or game libraries, this kind of speed ensures that you won't be sitting around waiting. Later in the video editing test, we're going to see just how much of a difference it makes in practice. Lastly, we have the memory performance. The M4 Neo comes with 32GB of DDR5 RAM clocked in at 4800MHz. For this test, we're running with IDA64, giving us a read speed of nearly 60GB per second, with a latency sitting around 121 nanoseconds. That's pretty strong results for DDR5, ensuring that you can have smooth multitasking and responsiveness across workloads. So whether you're switching in between multiple softwares, editing large media files, or just gaming in the background with applications open, this kind of throughput makes everything feel effortless. Okay, with that concluded, let's get into some real-time gameplay and see just how the PC runs with a few of these titles. First up is Fortnite. I used custom settings here to calibrate the game to perform as best as I could on this PC. This setting is comparable to the default high settings with some minor tweaks. It's quite impressive with how it performed as I was getting around 70 to 80 FPS with no stutters. The gameplay was smooth, even in motion on aircraft vehicles, fight engagements weren't laggy, and overall, the game felt like it was optimized well to be played on this device. Next up is Monster Hunter World. We're going to be trying both high and low settings. First up is high settings. Looks like I was getting an average of 30 FPS here during gameplay. And during high engagement moments with a lot of particles, it was dropping as low as 15 FPS. It did feel a bit sluggish, so I wouldn't recommend playing on this performance setting. Instead, let's try out the low settings. Although the graphics are at the minimum, the game doesn't actually look too bad. Our frame rate is much higher here and gameplay is smoother as well. When I first saw this PC on the Amazon listing, I noticed that it advertised DVD on its performance section, so I definitely had to try that out. Playing on both ultra settings and low settings, the M4 Neo can run this game pretty well. I was getting close to 50 FPS on ultra settings, which is comparable to the 60 FPS that most players are getting on their devices. Oh! 
They're both on me. What do I do? I'm gonna do anything. I have one case to be behind and then the other guy comes me. I'm not gonna go to the Wait, they actually can't find me. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, never mind. I got worried. <laughs> yeah. They were right on it. No way I'm getting gang banged right now. <laughs> Switching it to low settings, my FPS nearly doubled and the gameplay felt way smoother than earlier. Realistically, for a game like this, I prefer to play on low settings anyways. I'm gonna cut him off, watch. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. What? He sprint. He did this. <laughs> he did the stupid sprint for shit. Nice. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my god. I love it. All in all, I didn't expect the M4 Neo to perform this well for most of the games that we displayed and it actually blows my mind that these mini PCs are capable of doing so. I mentioned that I wanted to test some creative workflow on this device as well, so how about we put that to the test with some video editing in real time and see how it performs. First we'll see how it handles transferring raw files from a USB flash drive and importing that into our editing software. This process was seamless and I was able to access my files and editing softwares with no hassles. Premiere Pro loaded in seconds and I was able to freely import media files with no downtime. During editing, I was able to skim through the timeline, reviewing and cutting clips that I wanted to include for the video. I was able to view the project media in real time with no lag whatsoever. After the final adjustments, it was time to render the project. I exported the media at 15 megabytes per second for the bitrate since it was a 1080p file. The video itself was 3 minutes long and the time it took to render the entire project was 30 seconds. With the M4 being able to handle heavy workloads like video editing and rendering really speaks volumes of what the PC is capable of. And if you're someone who does a lot of work on a PC, you can take advantage of all the ports provided since you can hook up to 4 monitors at once here. Nowadays it seems like everyone is spending thousands of dollars on a PC setup and it really makes you question if all that is really worth it. After trying out the M4 Neo firsthand, I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on mini PCs with the potential of it rivaling most desktops, especially when you consider that you're spending a fraction of the cost as well. This PC retails for 589 USD, but at the time of this video, you can actually save $150 and get it for $439 by using my link in the video's description. I feel like this deal is way too good to pass up and if you're looking for a PC, then this is the best time to get one. With that said, that will conclude my review of Boss Games M4 Neo. I'm curious as to what you guys think about this PC and how it compares to most desktops. Let me know if you already own this PC or if you have something similar, or if you would even consider picking one up yourself. I had a lot of fun making this video and I hope it helps you on your search for a new PC. Please help support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel for more videos like this cause there are a lot more mini PCs that I would love to cover on this channel. That's it for now and until next time. Take care.